positive feedback systems or uh, we can define it as exponential growth equation. Let us try to compute that. So, the initial system we started with is ds by dt is g into s that is what we start with. So, let us just into g integrate both sides uh, ok steps let's do that s at time 0 to s at time t uh, t not to t g into d t which is integrate uh, integrate integral of 1 by s is uh, logarithm of s. Uh, so, s at time t s at time 0 equal to g into uh, g into t. This means that uh, I can raise it to the power e and I solve it then I can get s at time t is s at time s naught into e power g t. Right. Log then just raised it to power exponential and then moved the denominator to the right side. Uh, so, I get a stock at time t is nothing but initial value of stock into e power g t and as you can see these are positive values g is greater than 0. Uh, So, g is greater than 0 then it is going to exhibit exponential growth just by defined by this term here and of course, s naught is a constant value I am just multiplying by the constant and given the initial value of stock and if I know g and for whatever value of t of course, I can directly compute what is going to be the stock value at time t. So, this is the value of stock at time t, this is your initial value of stock. Of course, if you want to get any different point in time you just take that as the initial value and then take the time difference. That is uh, denote it as equation 1. Bad thing about putting these things, it means that there are going to be more equations coming. Let us say this is 1. Uh, okay. Now, let us see what can I look at. Uh, um, okay, let me introduce this one. Now, uh, you can remember this s at time t is s naught into e power g t. It is not that we always use this fractional growth rate of uh, g we also define something called as a time constant. Let us define it as capital T which is nothing but a reciprocal of the fractional growth rate. Fractional growth rate g that is t is just defined as 1 over g. Of course, since the time units of the units of g is 1 over time. So, capital T's units is of course, time um, where it is useful is it is not that wherever you are look, looking at interest rates sometime it could be the uh, delay. So, instead of multiplying g by with the stock value you can take stock divided by time value it is means the same thing. So, uh, the equations uh, stock at time t uh, is equal to s naught into e power g t instead of g I can always use 1 by t 1 by capital T. Uh, so, so, suppose an interval of time capital T passes. Uh, from 1 
the stock at capital T time will be stock at time 0 into E power G T is S naught into E power G itself is 1 by capital T time capital T time units passes so small t is also capital T. So, that means S at time T is S S naught into E power 1 which is about 2.72 into S naught. So, after passage of 1 time constant the stock value will be approximately 2.72 times the initial value of stock and if say 2 time unit a uh, 2 t uh, 2 t time passes if 1 t time passes 2.72 if 2 t time units pass then stock value will be 2.72 into 2.72 times uh, that will be the stock at time 2 t. So, this is defined as the time constant. Now, let us come to our one uh, question that we asked what is the doubling time let us see whether we can uh, compute that let us look at doubling time let us say T d doubling time it is the time after which after time T d stock value doubles we need to compute this T d let us see. So, 1 states that S at time T is S naught into E power G T. So, I know the stock value doubles. So, let us say 2 into S naught is equal to S naught into E power G times T d already have it. And cancelling S naught and uh, taking the logarithm on both sides G into T d which means that T d is equal to 0.69 divided by G or 0.69 into time constant capital T. So, this 0.69 will keep appearing because linear systems and we are looking at even goal seeking etcetera uh, or the for computation or some rule purposes people sometimes refer to it as 70 percent rule that after uh, with every dt time units 70 percent or is nothing but 0 0.7 times your uh, time constant or nothing but roughly 0 0.69 divided by g. So, for example, in our uh, interest rate example T d is 0 0.69 divided by 0.15, g is 0 0.15, uh, which is about uh, 4.6. Since our time resolution was uh, time interval of integration was 1, so only in the fifth period we were able to observe that it has doubled the value. If you had used a smaller time step, then you would have observed more closer to 4.5, 4.6. This is so every 4.6 years or 5 periods, or it is just 5 years. So, every 4.6 years, the value of stock is going to keep doubling. So, and that can be uh, computed just by given the G values. So, if we know what is the fractional growth rate, then all we have to do is 0.7 by this for uh, approximate value 0.69 by 0.15, 4.6 in this case. Uh, here is the doubling time. Uh, yeah. So there is nothing much to do with exponential systems other than just calculating okay, what is going to be doubling time and identifying it. So now let us uh, go back to our slides. So we have seen this, we have seen a time constant uh, for passage of one time constant stock value will be. 2.72 times initial value, larger t or smaller g produces flatter growth curve. So, now that we know all these equations, it is very easy to compute, that is not the intent. As we are looking at a more modeling course, we need to understand what will happen when the based on the values of g, 
if you have large value of g then the growth has to be going to be steeper if it's a smaller value of g growth is going to be uh, more uh, what is it flatter that is uh, you going to be much more time before you actually perceive the exponential growth doubling time uh, time interval required for a for an exponentially growing variable to double in its value td is a 0.69 times your time constant so now, if we start plotting the level and the rate, that is, you plot the rate for every value of the level that we just saw for the example, uh, for same example, you will find a linear line with the slope of g. It can be expected because you have this linear equation, right? So, for any positive value of g, you will still produce exponential growth. So, even if this curve, even if this line, so even if this line is like this. I'm going to still produce exponential growth, or the line is going to be like this. Because I'm going to produce exponential growth, we call these linear systems coming from this diagram right here, where you can see that this line itself is linear, which is why the entire system becomes a linear system right there. Any questions so far? Not yet fully awake. Okay. Uh, so let's go back and spend some time on looking at some graphs. The time horizon over which exponential growth occurs alters the perception of growth, even though the underlying system remains the same. So it depends on how much data that we want to look at from the past or uh, the time series data we are looking at alters our perception. So let's see what we mean by that, and let us relate it with our variables of t d or uh, time constant t. Let's see. Suppose the time horizon taken happens to be just 0.1 times your doubling time, then it looks like there is absolutely no growth. It is very easy to just dismiss saying no system is fine, it is just flat, there is no growth in the system, it looks very uh, flat. This time horizon is just 0.1 times your doubling time. Your time horizon is 1 into doubling time. If you Maybe if you squint your eyes or something, then you may kind of start to perceive some exponential growth. But for practical purpose, it looks like a linear growth. It just goes from uh, whatever in this example as one to two in the time constant, so it looks like a linear growth to us. So you don't start to perceive exponential growth at all, even if you observe system only until its doubling time. Right? Doubling time is depends on 0.69 by g. So, if g is going to be very small, then I am going to get a much longer uh, doubling time. Suppose it is 10 times your td, then you can start to perceive some exponential growth, which is uh, shown here. But even then, observe what is happening in x axis, x axis also changes with that uh, time horizon 0 to uh, 10, then 0 to 100 time units, now 0 to 1000 time units, when you start to perceive it. But the difficulty comes in is when you look at data from say 0 to 400, it is almost invisible to us and it seems to say that nothing is affecting the system there and suddenly things are active only after time 400 which is not the case, underlying system is the same. But if you again take too much data, then you do not see anything, you just see that something is just spiking all of a sudden, that is an exponential uh, growth. What is super exponential growth? Many positive feedback system is characterized by doubling time that decrease rather than remain fixed as a value a system level increases. If doubling time is constant that means you are having an exponential growth after every 5 time unit passes your level value the stock value became 100 then 200 then 400 then 800 after every 5 years the doubling time is constant. But systems such as unfortunately population systems the doubling time is not constant the doubling time keeps reducing for as the time it took take 5 years uh, to reach the double the value next time it may take just 4 years to double in its value and following time it may take just 3 and a half years to double in its value. So, as doubling time reduces that means the value of g is increasing that is what it means. So, if you plot as the stock value increases the value of g changes. So, if you want to plot it, 
system world population you get a start looking at a non linear system because value of g is also now getting affected by some other factors it is no more a external variable as we assume as long as g is constant doesn't change then you got a linear system as well as a exponential growth so system is linear growth is exponential but if g itself starts to increase as we go along as the stock level increases then you start to get an what we call as a non linear system because the level and rate relation now became non linear and the growth is going to be more pronounced look at world population example if you assume exponential growth then probably you'll get the blue line super exponential growth you are going to get this black line that you see here suddenly exponential growth doesn't seem so bad you may you may be happy to have exponential growth then exponential growth is bad then super exponential growth is um, so you want to move to exponential growth then come to a more goal seeking kind of systems 